All right, so one of the questions I get all the time, people asking, how can we break through into a supernatural life? And so we're gonna talk about that today. And um, hey, this video is being used for two purposes. We're using it uh, at Revival X because I am currently traveling. So this is gonna be in-house. So everybody at Revival X, uh, how are you? And why don't you give, uh, give somebody a fist bump? Do it right now, go ahead, do it. Fist bump, fist bump, fist bump, smile, let them know that they're amazing. And so that's the first purpose. Second purpose is, uh, purpose is just for everybody, for all of the rest of you. This message is going to be online, of course, um, as it is right now. You're watching it. And so here we go. Supernatural life. I mean, God has called us to live a life of absolute dramatic shock and awe where the glory of God just blows up, where it's incredible. Life is incredible. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. That's what he's called us to. And so I want uh, you, where are we at? You, oh, here we are, back here. You, 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 you. I want you to understand that you can do this. Now, I'm going to give you some very clear steps on how to do this. We were, um, last week, last week, we had uh, 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 kind of our core team, our culture team, we call them. And uh, several of them, we were downstairs in prayer and just going hard after God, which is what we do at Revival X. And uh, the Lord just kind of deposited something into me. I just wanted to encourage them uh, regarding the process of what it is to start a crazy, wild, prophetic ministry like this with a big vision of full-blown revival and kind of some of the steps or the process that we can expect um, in, you know, in the church. And as I was praying about this and thinking about this, I'm thinking, you know what, this process also works in individuals in our personal lives. And so this is really going to help. Now, let me, let me, uh, throw a few things out there before we really get into this. It's critical. It's very, very important. Um, that we understand that we must be, uh, forward focused and outward focused. Okay. So what, what we're going to be talking about, uh, today is not going to work really well. If we're, if we just have this mindset of, okay, God, I need my life to be better. I need personal breakthrough. I need, I need my little world to be a little more, uh, you know, uh, ordered and at peace and all that kind of stuff. A lot of that's going to happen. It'll happen. You'll see God start to move pieces in your personal life. But if we are not outward focused, if we're not ministry minded, if we aren't consumed with our calling and the reason we were born you were born you were not you're not born just to kind of live your life and have you know go to work and have a family and and all that and all that's good it's all good it's all it's all important um that's not why you were born i mean if we were if that was the end goal you know we could just you know be born right into heaven you know and be kind of done with it we're here on the earth for a purpose there are billions of people going to hell uh there is such wickedness on the earth uh it's 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 horrible it's 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 tragic and so we all have an assignment you have an assignment you may not know exactly what it is but i'm telling you right now your assignment is much bigger and much more powerful and much more significant than you probably realize and it will absolutely consume you. And you're going to see that. You're going to see that as we kick into this. So, so we can't just kind of stay inside our own little world, our own little spheres, focused on our own little daily lives. If we do that, I'm telling you, and you probably will agree, it'll lead to frustration. If our, if our daily focus is simply, you know, I need, I, God, I need you to show up here in this area. If that's, if that's it, you're going to get frustrated. No, I don't want that. You don't want that. We don't want that. Right. Um, so we need, we, we need to understand our calling. You know, uh, we can't be just always on the defensive. I know sometimes, uh, that can happen to where our whole life we're just defensive and we're just, you know, you know, we're looking in God help and protect and help and save and, help. and, and, uh, we, we can't do that. We've got to be full of fire and full of confidence, full of passion and full of, full of, uh, uh, walking in authority and, and, and conquering the enemy. And we've got, we can't be on the defensive. We got to be really on the offensive. All right. So that's your introduction as we get into this super simple steps. And, you know, uh, some of it might seem a little obvious, 
but 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 I think it's going to help. Okay, now now keep in mind, I I shared this initially. Uh, you know, how will a a new church that's prophetic, that's that's uh, focused on revival, you know, all of that. How will what will the progress or what will the process look like? That's where this message uh, started. God just downloaded it to me in a few seconds, really, and. Um, but then here we go. So keep in mind that this works for the church and this works for you. All right, number one, number one, you could have guessed it. It's a lifestyle of prayer. All right, let me read Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know what we are, what to pray for as we, as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So let me make this very, very clear. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, baptism in power, absolutely critical. I'm telling you what, if you don't pray in tongues all the time, if you are not, you don't have that tremble in your spirit, go after that. I'm telling you, God's ready to blow you up. Uh, you know, I was talking to uh, uh, Chuck, you know, and, and we were talking about, you know, w w what are some steps? And this was several weeks ago and some, you know, some things that we can continue to do, you know, as we, as we are working toward revival. And, uh, you know, he said, he said he's convinced that we need to pray in tongues a ton more. It needs to dominate our lives, it needs to fill our lives, praying in tongues all the time. We've got to be baptized in the, the Holy Spirit. Prayer, I'll tell you this. And yet for, for most people, prayer is just, it's dead and dry and frustrating and it's not something they want to do. And it's really, it's like, you know, God, where are you? But when you pray in tongues and you in the in the baptism of power is on you, everything is nuclear. It explodes. It's incredible. Let me read to you. Uh, here's a good famous verse for you. Acts 2, it says this, verse 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Say, fire! And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right? Matt, this was, this was prophesied by, by uh, uh, um, before, before it happened. Matthew, you know, 311. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. That's what we have to be living in and walking in. Acts 4.31, when they prayed, come on, how about a prayer meeting like this? Come on, Revival X. And when they prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Man, we've got to have this. Oh, Jesus, come on. We've got to have this shaking and this rocking and this burning and the fire and the wind of the Spirit. And, you know, and, and so, so on a church level, this is something we need. But on a personal level, you absolutely need it. I need it. We've got to go there. You can't just expect kind of live your life normal and then kind of show up in the church. It's like, boom, and that happens. That's not how it works. Even, you know, in the upper room, they waited 10 days and prayed for 10 days before it happened okay so 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 prayer uh you know colossians 4 2 continue steadfastly in prayer being watchful in it with thanksgiving so you know um i could spend forever on this this is this is the dominant uh one of the dominant messages of my life uh but but prayer and so again you know you know bottom line you got to do this you got to do it you can't just go to you can't hear me talking about it all the time right you got to do it. You got to, you got to, you adopt this lifestyle, adopt this, you know, this plan of action, um, you adopt this, 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 this habit of, you know, daily habit of just being with God and living in the spirit and walking in the spirit and praying in the spirit and praying without ceasing and praying in tongues and, uh, fill your life with that, you know, and I can go off on some tangents here, get rid of all the distractions, get rid of them, get rid of the stuff that keeps you out of the presence of God, get rid of immoral media. I'm not saying become a monk or become a hermit. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you'd stop having fun in life. I'm not, but what I'm saying is walk in the spirit everywhere you go, everything you do. If you're on the golf course, golf in the spirit, man, I think a lot of us that golf should do that more. I know I probably I should, because it's really easy to get in the flesh in the golf course, right? 
And, but, but whatever my point is, is whatever you're doing, but, but if there's distractions to really go in deep, you know, if you're golfing too much, if you're, if you're playing too much, if you're being entertained too much, if that's consuming your life, man, get rid of it. You know, live that fasted lifestyle, separate out, pray, contend, go after God. Um, but every, every stinking day of our lives should be consumed by prayer. And I'm not talking about just petition. Oh, God, I need this and I need that and help me with this. And, oh, no, 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 no. Praying with authority, praying with, with, with conviction, fighting the enemy, doing all that. Okay, so prayer. Number one, again, if, if, if there, you know, there was a, uh, I won't go into the story, but there was this, this huge, incredible move of God. I think it was, where was it? Africa, I think. And, um, I think, and, and, uh, and they were having a hard time and warfare was coming. Well, they just stopped everything and they just had prayer meetings and they just prayed, they just prayed, um, you know, and, and then all of a sudden supernatural things are happening. God's moving. Listen, it's a big story. It's a cool story. I won't go into it, but, but it, the, the principle is true. You know, Hey, you know, we pray an hour before the service every, every week, by all means, get to that prayer meeting, 6 PM on Tuesdays. Coming up, we'll be there at 8, 8 30 a.m. on Sundays as we, as we kick into, uh, you know, a, a new schedule coming up soon, Tuesdays and Sundays. Uh, get to the prayer meeting. every get, not, And not just a Revival X. Wherever you are, go to the prayer meeting. If there's a prayer meeting, go to the prayer meeting. Go, you know, start a prayer movement. Pray, you know. So, all right. So, pray. So, that's number one. Number two. So as, so, and this is progressive. So when we've got the prayer thing going on, some of you wonder why you are not able to, to really flow in the prophetic or hear God. Number two is a prophetic life. Okay. So now we got the prayer thing happening and spirit of God's moving and the wind is blowing and the fire's raging and our tears are running down our cheeks and we're contending and we're crying out and we're full of Jesus and full of fire and, and living holy, you know, we're living this life. Now the prophetic kicks. And now we got to really start to pursue that. First Corinthians 14, one says, pursue love, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you prophesy. That's number one, the most important gift, the most important thing, most important, most important. You got to get that. You got to get that gift of prophecy. You got to prophesy. All right. Acts 2, 17 and 18. And in the last days, here we are in Acts 2, Acts 2 again. In the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall, 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 shall prophesy. Your young men see visions. Your old men dream dreams. Um, and by the way, if I understand correctly, the way that that is best translated is that your sons and daughters shall prophesy and um, um, and and um, have dreams and have visions. Your young men shall prophesy and have visions and have dreams. Your old men shall prophesy and you know see visions and have dreams. And so it's that they we all do do all of it and. Um, you can look that up, but you're old. So, so all of it. So I dream I'm not old. I'm not old. I'm as young as they come. I'm young. I'm a young 54 years old. Come on. And, uh, wow. 54, 54 years old. Okay. I'm young. And so, so I dream, I dream a lot. I have visions, right? I have visions. I prophesy, of course, you know, so it's not, it's not that you just get to, you know, pick one, you, you, you get all of it. Um, it says, even on my male servants, my female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. So, so listen in the church, you know, we're, we're not there yet as a church. We're not mature in this yet as, as a church, as a, as a church, as a ministry, as a revival hub, uh, we are going to see the prophetic ramp up like crazy. 
and people are going to be mature in prophecy and given prophetic words that are just earth shaking. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that. We're not seeing that right now. I've seen it everywhere else. I've been in ministry, different churches I planted and things like that. It takes time. You got you got to work together as a team. And then you get to that place where boom, you know, it's kicking and there's prophecy. But on, on a personal level, we absolutely need to be hearing God's voice. The Bible says that his sheep hear his voice. His sheep, bah, that's us. We hear his voice voice all right and but that doesn't happen outside of a lifestyle of crazy prayer so if you're just kind of living your life as normal and having little casual maybe conversations with god and that's about it you're really not going to live a prophetic life you're really not going to walk in the spirit you're really not going to have dreams and visions and encounters you're just really not with 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 a rare exception here or there you're just really not um and so so, so prophecy, this is where your prayer becomes supercharged. This is where you become quite addicted to intercession. Now it's prophetic. Now we're not just kind of shooting in the dark, you know, hoping that we're praying the right things. Uh, we're not even, you know, only, you know, praying in tongues, you know, as the spirit prays through us, which is something we should be doing all the time. Not only that, but now God is speaking very specific things to us. He's waking us up in the night. He's, he's, he's speaking mysteries, you know, uh, to us. He's revealing prayer focuses to us. He's, he's talking to us. So now we know, now we know if God's speaking to us about something that boom, boomity boom, it's going to kick. It's going to happen. It's what we're called to do. Now there's fire in our prayer and there's energy on our prayer and there's faith. Faith skyrockets, right? You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That word, word, the word of God, word, tra is translated there, rhema. So faith comes by hearing, not by just reading the Bible, but by the rhema. And of course, the word of the, the logos, the Bible, uh, the written rather, can absolutely become rhema as it explodes off the page, but it's that specific rhema word of God. When God speaks something, then our faith skyrockets and we're like, wow, wow, okay. And that's prophecy. God's prophetically revealing things to us. Now we can decree it and declare it and advance it and pray it. We can do that with, with, with I mean, loads of faith. We're just, we're just burning. And so, so pra uh, prophecy absolutely supercharges our prayer life. We get addicted to intercession. Um, and by the way, let me throw this out there at you. Remember, we keep talking about we need to be outward, outward focused, ministry focused. We've got to be not focused on our own little worlds, our own little situation, our own little day to day. We've got we've got to be focused on the mission. It's the mission, the mission, the mission. Um, so let me let me throw this out at you. God will talk a lot more to you through prophecy, dreams, and visions, etc. If we are focused on ministry primarily as opposed to our personal lives. So if God's looking down and he's like, wow, that laborer is available. That person is locked in. That person knows why they were born. That person right there, wow, they're going to, they're, 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 they're ready. So, so, all right, let me give you some military level top secret instructions. You're not just looking to kind of kind of live your own little life here. Wow. And I'm thinking what God might be thinking, you know? And it's he's like, "Here, let me reveal this to you and let me reveal that to you and and here's where you're going and this is what's coming next and this is what the enemy's doing and this is how you need to approach and this is how you need to advance and this is how you need to attack and this is how you need to pray and this is how you need, this is what you need to focus on. You need to learn this in the word." You, you know, so all of a sudden the instructions, the revelation from heaven explodes when we're focused on ministry and not our own personal situation right and so 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 when when our when our focus is regional for example it's regional it's the city you know that's why so many local churches really have uh very little power is because they're very inward focused it's very much about just their church and their growth and their situation and they pray about their finances and they pray about the, uh, growing numerically and they you know and they're focused on and so and so the power very usually is not 
in those types of churches. But you get a church that's focused on the region, focused on the city. They don't really care so much about growing themselves. They're not really focused on the local. They understand in scripture that the church is defined by the city, not the street corner. And so when, and so churches that are focused like that, power shows up. The spirit of God moves. Same is true uh, personally. Jeremiah 1, 9. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. When God puts his words in our mouth, that's powerful. That means we that means he's going to use us not to prophesy about our own little situation. Are you getting this? Are you, are you I hope you're getting this. Not just to prophesy about our own little situation, our own little world, but he's putting words in our mouth to prophesy, to speak oracles, to speak to the culture, to speak to the region, to the city, to speak to the atmosphere, right? He's calling us to do that. You know, Revelation 19:10, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I mean, that's Jesus. So we want to reveal Jesus, right, is the idea. So, so, so now the gifts, right? We can branch out just a little bit in this point. Remember point number one, prayer. Point number two, the prophetic. We can, we can branch out a little bit. The gifts, including prophecy, must be active, active in our lives and in our churches. Let me read this kind of lengthy passage to you. Um, not too bad. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 11. All right, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that you, when you were pagans, y'all remember when you all were pagans? BC, before Jesus, right? Oh, days are so better now, right? When you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are a varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom. So it's a spiritual gift. To another, the utterance of knowledge, right? So these are very, very powerful. We need these active at Revival X, need these active in your life. Um, according to the same spirit, to another faith. So, so now everybody has faith, but there are some people that have that gift of faith where it's like, it's just, it's just other, it's other, it's next level, right? So that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, uh, faith by the same spirit. Uh, and it's powerful when that's in, in action. I was healed once at, as I was standing next to a, 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 a preacher who said the, the, the gift of faith just activated in me, pray for healing. And all of a sudden my whole body just uh, manifested and it was incredible. It was incredible. And because of that man's gift of faith, right? When I kind of pulled on that, I'm like, all right, God, I'm pulling on that. Here we go. And boom, it happened. So, so faith to another, the gifts of healing. Now we can all heal. We can all pray for the sick, right? But again, same thing, a kind of next level, right? Where they really flow in that, they function in that. To another, the working of miracles, same thing. To another, prophecy. We're talking about prophecy in this point. It's the same thing. We all prophesy, all of us, but there are some that uh, prophesy at a next level. And, and then there's prophets, prophets, right? Prophets. The office of prophet is what I'm trying to say. So they're, not everybody's a prophet. Not everybody is in the office of prophet, but everybody prophesies. They have, the, they, they have that gift. Others have that gift, not the office, but the gift at another level. So it's kind of three different levels here we're talking about with prophecy. And, then, but then you have the office of prophet and prophets can be uh, a prophet to the nations and it's, it's a different kind of a thing. But um, so, so there, we got prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. It's the, the discerning of spirits, um, you know, which there's no gift gift of discernment, by the way, a lot of people, you know, a lot of the heresy hunters out there, I've, I've just got the gift of discernment and I can tell, I can tell when someone's bad and I can, t that's no, that's not how it works. Uh, it's the discerning of spirits. You can discern a, an evil spirit, right? To another various kinds of tongues. So 
again, we all pray in tongues. We all can pray in tongues, but there are different tongues that not everybody has. There's tongues and interpretation. Okay, and here it says it to, the, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. All right, and then final final scripture here in this point, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies. And so, so point number two, the prophetic and even a little bit broader, just the various gifts and the activity and the moving of the spirit of God. So when we're living a lifestyle of prayer, now we're going after, we're going after the prophetic, we're going after these gifts, you know, we're pursuing these gifts is what the scripture says. And then things really start to get exciting. Now the third point, Number three, um, vision, a vis vision. All right. So there can be overlapping circles, by the way, you know, things can, you know, it's not, all, it's not always that clear, that clear demarcation. It's like, all right, now I get to have vision. Well, there can, it's all kind of moving kind of together, but there's, there's some, there's some, uh, procedure to it. Vision at this point just goes crazy. It just explodes, right? Amos 3, 7 says, for the, for, the, uh, for the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy? So when the prophetic is active, we are overwhelmed with the plans of God, okay? The prophetic always, if we're doing it right, remember we have to focus on ministry and our calling, Um, when we are when we are focused on that, when the prophetic is kicking, it will always activate vision in our lives at various levels, various ways. Okay, it will activate vision. Um, Habakkuk two two, and the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time; it hastens to the end; it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will, do not, it will not delay. So God will burn in us this vision. It's like, wow, this is huge. But you got to, you've got to understand that there, there's, there's delay. There's process. God's going to equip you. He's going to train you. He's going to prepare you for, to see the fulfillment of that vision. There was a time I was uh, receiving prophecy and, and it was incredible, kind of a prophetic session. And right at the end, it was over. And then I was about to leave. And the guy said, wait a minute, I've got one more word for you. The Lord just has a question for you. He had no idea what I, who I was or that I was in ministry. He didn't know me at all. He said, the Lord just has a question for you. And he said, the, uh, here's the question. If, if, if the fulfillment of your calling and your ministry, if you don't, if, if what you're contending for, you don't see it for 20 years, Will you still contend? That was the prophecy. That's what he spoke to me. And the coolest thing was my response. Initially, uh, immediately rather, immediately. I was like, yes, of course. What else am I going to do? This is why I was born. I'm like, I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to wait 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. And, and, and so, so when you're driven by vision, the delay doesn't spin you out because you're, you are totally given to the process of growing into the fulfillment of that vision, of that calling. Proverbs 28 or 29, 18, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, right? But blessed is he who keeps the law. The law. And so if we have no prophetic vision, the prophetic revelation of who we are and what God's called us to do and what the mission is and where we're going, and what, if we don't have that, then we just scatter. That's another an, another uh, um, interpretation says the people scatter. Another one says the people perish. And so if you don't have prophetic vision, you're just wandering around like a zombie is what's happening. All right. And again, the only way to get to the vision is wildfire, nonstop, all consuming prayer and a stimulation of the prophetic and the gifts. So you got to do those two things first in order for this vision thing uh, to happen. Your vision will consume you night and day. Let me share with you just real quick, kind of my life vision. Way back in the day, back in the day in 92, 3, 4, I don't know, mid 90s, early 90s, somewhere in there. When I was just, I didn't, I knew nothing. I knew nothing. I was barely saved. I, I was, I was just like, but God started just working me and Boom, the first time I really hear, heard him talk, he said, open up to Joshua 3, 5. I opened it up and it's like the words didn't just leap off the page, but they went 
and they just they just grafted. To, it's like all I'm mean, like. It became my 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 vision. Let me just kind of read. I, I have a whole teaching on this, but just real real quick. Joshua three five. In fact, it's hanging on the wall at Revival X. Joshua said to the people, "Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you." Okay, if that's not enough to get you going, come on. But it continues, and there's so much to unpack. I'm not going to unpack it today, but just real little, just real briefly, just to kind of give you an idea of how a, how a vision will consume you. So this Joshua three five consumes me every day. So this is why the consecrated life for me is so important, and holiness is so important, and repentance is so important, and 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 all of that is because I know there's wonders coming. I know there's. I've seen a lot of wonders, but I know there's big wonders ahead of me. Verse 6 says, And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went on before the people. Well, very interestingly, um, I didn't know anything about, about carrying the presence of God or the prayer movement or anything back then. I knew nothing. But now this is my life. It's gathering priests gathering carriers of fire, carriers of God's presence, carriers of the Ark of the Covenant, um, and, and we're, to, we're, to, we're to advance. And, you know, it says that the, to pass before the people, to advance as carriers of the, of the fire of God. You know, my ministry is Carriers of Fire International, right? And so um, it's so cool. It's just so cool. I just love it. Back in the day, I, this, it, it, I mean, I, I literally knew nothing. I just, I didn't understand anything I was reading except for the wonders part. That was cool. And, and the consecrated, consecrate part, I was still figuring that out and um, didn't even really know what that meant. But, but to watch it here all these years later and, you know, what, 25, 30 years later, however long it's been, and... To see it, it's me. It's incredible. I don't know. I'm just. I wanted to share this with you just to let you know how how vision completely becomes you. You adopt it. You embrace it. So so this whole idea of the prayer movement, carrying the presence of God, it's who I am. Um, and so let's let's continue just a little bit here. Joshua three fourteen. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan and the feet of the priest bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water. And I love this little in parentheses part. It says, now the Jordan overflows its banks throughout the time of harvest. And I know we're, we're getting close to the time of harvest. When we carry the presence of God and we step, we step in, step into that, to that river, right? And, and the harvest is coming. It says this, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zaratan. And those flowing down toward the Sea of Araba, the Salt Sea or the Dead Sea, were completely cut off. They were cut off from, from, from the Dead Sea. And it says, and the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. So it's, we know what happened at Jericho, and the walls came down, and, and God's people advanced and taking new territories, and uh, dramatic. I mean, and the, of course, we know the story is much bigger than that, as God, you know, here we are in the new covenant, and Jesus comes. And so... I, 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 this is my vision, and that vision consumes me. The idea of carrying the presence of God, the idea of of, of stepping into the waters and cutting off the flow to the salt sea, and 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 it's the time of harvest and moving into a new land, and you know, and, and where the you know, uh, giants were in the land, and where the previous generation was too afraid, and we're going and we're going to battle, and the walls are falling down, and the worship is causing the walls to fall down, and oh my gosh, are you getting this? I mean, you're just to kind of get a little picture of. Of, of who I am. And, but it, this is all about vision. We must have vision. Okay, next. So again, progressive, progressive, prayer, then the prophetic, and then vision. Next, you're gonna love this one. Warfare, warfare. It is at this point, you have disturbed the enemy. 
okay? He doesn't care too much about us when we're kind of just protecting our own little worlds. You know, you might think, it's like, wait a minute, he fights me all the time and I'm just barely able to pray for my family or barely able to go to work. And, and that is not so much because all the forces of hell are coming against you. It's simply because you are focused wrongly and you're a little weak. And so even the little tiniest demon feels like a dragon, right? So that's what's going on. And so it's, it's, you know, it's not that all the forces of hell have been strategically gathered and uh, released against you. Well, you're not a threat at that point. Why would that happen? Now, it's just because you're not living in the spirit and walking in the spirit and praying and hearing God and living and living that way. And so even the little tiniest demons, which they got jobs to do, you know, they're speaking to you and doing things and causing problems. And you're like, Oh my gosh. It's, and, um, that's what that is. Okay. But at this point here, now, now, you know, now there's a problem. He, does, he doesn't care too much about us protecting our own little worlds, but he is provoked when we threaten his. All right. He doesn't like that. This, the, the, the vision is all about dominion, about taking ground, about piercing the darkness, advancing the kingdom of God. And the enemy absolutely does not like that. Second Corinthians 10, 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but get this, they have divine power to destroy strongholds. So you got to ask yourself the question, are you waking up every day and destroying strongholds? Are you doing that? Um, we've got to do that. If not, well, okay, let's kind of analyze where we are in this whole process. Deuteronomy 28, 7, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Ephesians 6, 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He's scheming against us for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and spirits and authorities uh, against cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And last scripture here, Luke 10, 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning for heaven. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. So in order for nothing to hurt you, you got to tread You've got to function in your authority. You're not going to understand your authority if you're not in prayer, if you don't have vision, if the prophetic and the gifts aren't kicking. You're not going to walk in that uh, authority. You're not going to even trouble the enemy. But once you do, at this point, the warfare kicks in. Let's go to the next point. Next one. Almost done here. Assignments assignments. Now you're a warrior. Now you're fighting. Now you're advancing. And now you are dangerous. Okay. And you are favored by God in a remarkable new way. The favor of God will follow you. It's just mind blowing. It's incredible. But, but assignments, that's the name of this. That's the, that's the subtitle here. Assignments. The enemy will have a, a strategic assignment against you. And God will send people and angels on assignment for you. So both of these things are happening. So, you know, as an example, um, you know, uh, uh, in, in um, Manitou Springs, we, there are witches that would visit our church, specifically there. Uh, it would happen, and all sorts of crazy would happen. There was a time I was at a conference and I was preaching at a conference and it was, it, you know, is is incredible. And uh, my lead intercessor walked down the aisle as I'm preaching. He would never do that. He, he never would disturb me as I'm preaching, but he did this day. And he spoke in my ear that there was a witch in the front row that was releasing curses over me in tongues. And uh, there was this lady all in flowing white garb. And uh, so, so, uh, what we did is we, I, I shifted gears and I, and I told everybody what my what intercessor said. And everyone's like, yep, there's something going on here. There's witchcraft in the room. So we shifted gears, started praying the spirit and fighting the enemy and all this kind of stuff. At the end of the thing, this lady hands me a check as a donation. And um, my intercessor said, we need to rip that up. She placed a curse on that check, wanted to get it into your hands, ripped it up, didn't receive it. And um, 
prayed against that. And so, so these types of assignments, when you're moving in power and you're moving uh, according to the vision God's given you and the calling that's on your life, you know, you're going to have assignments against you. Uh, your church will have assignments, you know, the, the witches will come and different ones will come and curses will come and the religious spirits will rise up against you and all sorts of that will be going on. Um, you know, but also you will start to see favor. People will be assigned to you. Angels will be, whether you see them or not, they're going to, you know, they're going to be assigned to you. Uh, We'll see that, you know, in our, in the church, we've seen whenever we, you know, move in this, it got to this level, boom, you know, people would start coming in and laborers and I don't know what's going on, but God led me here and God moved me to this city. I know I'm supposed to run with you. I'm, you know, and um, uh, you'll, you'll see that people will start giving financially, uh, you know, specifically God will plant people there to, uh, to give and to partner and all this kind of stuff, all the, you know, and so we see that on a church level and we see it on a personal level. I mean, I've seen it on a personal level, our entire lives, just the, the, the favor of God. Um, you know, great favor comes as, as a a great attack is threatened against us by the enemy. It's, it's, it's just, it's kind of, kind of cool. All right. And then kind of the last point, and there's one final, final point is advance. This is real short. This is where great forward progress comes breakthrough comes, miracles are happening, uh, our calling, the very reason we were born is on display, we're advancing, we're moving, and people see us, it's like, wow, that person is all about advancing against the wickedness in the region, and they're all about the prayer movement, or they're all about, you know, uh, evangelism, or they're all about this, or all about that, or all about, you know, all about, you know, uh, um, uh, ministry in the marketplace. And so they just know, they know who they are and they're advancing and they're having victories. And, um, it's, it's incredible walking in favor. And so the advance happens at this point. And then the final, final point is repeat at this point, And for the rest of our lives, all of this is going to happen continuously, simultaneously. The prayer never stops. The prophecy never stops. The vision never goes away. The warfare is going to be there. Assignments are going to, going to be there and advance is going to happen. Um, so there, there you have it. I mean, we got to kick in step one, develop a life of crazy wild pra- uh, prayer. And, um, I'm excited. I'm excited about what God's doing. I'm excited about what he's doing in your life, excited about what he's doing at revival X, but it's, it's a process it's a, it, it's a something we got to take seriously. We can't just play church. Uh, I have no desire just to have nice little happy Tuesday night services and kind of that's the story of Revival X. It's not the story of, of Revival X. We are called to advance into Branson and Southwest Missouri, We're called to tear down strongholds. We're called to usher in revival. We're called to equip the laborers and equip people uh, for the work of the kingdom. And we're called to do these things. And, uh, and I'm excited about it. But uh, let's pray. Let's pray. And let's just, uh, those of you that are at Revival X right now, why don't you stand up and pray? And let's, let's do this. And uh, uh, Jet, if you're there, you're there at Revival X, you better be. Uh, kick on some worship. And let's just, let's just start to pray. I want you to get into just kind of a, 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 a just a worshipful place right now where you're going to let God do whatever he wants in your life right now. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone, whether they're at Revival X right now or they're watching online, I pray that you would move in their lives. God, God, this, this Christian thing, God, it's not a game. We're not playing games. We're not just getting saved and then going about our lives. Lord, it, it is a massive, massive process. And there's an incredible mission and the vision is huge. And our callings are incredible, important. They're critical. Lord, here at the end of the age, Lord, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that there would be an awakening, God, that you would speak to us, that you would burn in us, that you would rock our little worlds right now. Lord, that you would shake us and quake us, break us in Jesus' name. Lord, make us ready, God, for what you have called us to. Lord, we were born for this hour. We were born for such a time as this. I bless you, God, and I thank you for what you're doing. I bless God. God, all of the people, Lord, that are hearing and watching, I pray in Jesus' name that you would just completely surprise them with your love and your power and your glory and your freedom and your fire. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for the wind and the fire as in Acts chapter two in the upper room, that we would see that, God, that would be normal and common. We would live in that realm. Let there be a baptism of fire. 
baptism in the Holy Spirit. I pray that people would would just uh, pray in tongues like like always, God, just let the groans that can't be uttered just erupt out of them. I pray, God, that the prophetic decrees and the oracles of God would explode out of their spirits, Lord. They would hear you and see you and encounter you and have dreams and visions, Lord, that they would know you deeply. They would be surrendered to you. They would consecrate themselves and go and, and go after the wonders of God that are coming, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would lead us into this supernatural life of power and victory. And, and man, God, I'm just asking, Lord, that you would just do something, God, in us right now, right now, wherever we are in this process, cause us to come alive, cause us to have that uh, just a sobriety about us, understanding the, 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 the seriousness of this, of this hour. And I pray, God, that we would move forward in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I'm going to invite right now all of you at Revival X uh, to find a place. We just got—we need to spend five or ten minutes, if you would. Um, I don't care how many people are there. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what the vibe is. You know, I'm doing this remote. Um, I'm asking everybody if you would spend five or ten minutes, find a place, sit in your chair if you need to, go to a, a, an altar, go to the front, the back there, on the carpet. Um, I'm going to ask the, my culture team. We have people that are um, um, identified uh, in our ministry to pray for people, and, and those are the ones I'm asking to pray for people. If you would just get ready to do that and pray for folks um, uh, and just uh, uh, let, let, let's see God really work. Uh, I bless you guys. Just go after God. Just go, 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 go. And uh, I'll, I'll see you all next week.